Hey guys, Morgan's Maintenance. Today's tool talk is going to be about plumbing tools and more specifically tools that you use either around or under a sink. And the reason why I'm making this video is because Papa Z6047 asked in a comment a while back, he said, hey, could you show the tools that you use underneath your sink? So that's what I'm going to show you today. Now what I use may vary from what you use and I think for the most part, we're probably pretty similar as far as the type of tools we use. Maybe we got a different brand here or there, whatever it might be. Uh, but then where the big variance may be is what materials are used in your area, especially like if you're not in the United States or even if you're in the United States. Now in my area, nine times out of 10, if it's not a new home, it is either copper or it's galvanized piping. And then every now and then you might run into some PVC, CPVC, but it's very rare. So I don't even carry that stuff on me. If I run into that, I convert it over to something else at that point in time. And usually galvanized, I do the same thing. If I run into galvanized, I find a joint somewhere. I pray that I can get that apart uh, without causing more leaks down the line. And then I switch it over to PEX or something like that. Uh, and then in newer homes in my area, PEX B is pretty much all that is around my area. I've, I've never seen Upanor PEX or PEX A in my area in a single house. I don't think it's readily available at all the supply stores and things like that. So it's stuff you have to order. That's why I don't have the M12 expander tool because I'm not going to order supplies and things like that all the time so that's where you may vary in the tools that you use underneath of a sink but that's i'm going to show you today what i typically use for the most part whether it's for drains uh, supply lines all those kinds of things just stuff that you would use around the sink so let's go ahead and get into this let's go ahead and knock out some of the basics out of the way just because they're not really tools but they're supplies of course you're always going to have plumber's putty some uh, thread tape some emery cloth and then some pipe dope those are all things that you need to have with you pretty much all the time because those are things that you're going to use. So I'm not really going to consider those in these, but I just wanted to give it a mention because somebody might say, hey, you're definitely going to need some of that. So one of the things under the sink that I run into and most of my drains are, you know, this PVC material, the trap material with your little thread connections and all those things. And you have to cut these and sometimes you have to use either a sawzall or oscillating tool. I've seen people use utility knives all those things this rigid cutter here which is the tailpiece cutter it runs you about $25 well worth the investment uh, you know I, I don't know how, how long I cut these before I bought this and now that I have this it has for inch and a half and for inch and a quarter and you just pull the trigger here it pulls back your blades you insert this Let's say I make my mark right there you can see your mark through there and then you just rotate the cutter uh, the one way that it says there you can see as I cut it, it makes a perfect line. And here's the nicest thing about it, because you know, you're putting a washer and all those things on there. It actually chamfers that edge a little bit and gives you a perfectly clean cut, you know, almost just like the same as that of the factory, if not even maybe a little bit better in my opinion, because you got a little bit more of a chamfer there for that to fit down in there. But that just looks nice. It doesn't look, you know, ugly. It doesn't look at an angle cuts it straight every time and again it does inch and a quarter and also inch and a half i can't recommend this enough and i've had it for a long time i've cut a whole lot of these and it's still just as sharp i haven't had to change the blades or anything like that it's well worth 25 dollars in my opinion next up whenever i'm dealing with copper uh there's several things you know you can obviously go in there and sweat things on you know and sometimes you're going to run into it where You've got a sweated stop on there and you either need to take it off and change it because, you know, it started leaking. I typically always go with the compression nut style whenever I'm dealing with copper because of the serviceability of it. And I also don't have to have an open flame in a cabinet or in someone's, you know, wall or whatever it is whenever I'm dealing with copper. I just try to stay away from using a torch. Sometimes I do solder. Sometimes I don't. It just depends on the situation and, you know, where, where that pipe is located I just don't like having that open flame. It's a big liability. You know, it's different when you work for a company, but when you own your own business and you pay your own insurance and all those things, that's something that you got to think about. Uh, so sometimes, you know, I'll get in somewhere and that stub out is way too long for what I want it to be. That's where I'll get out that M12 copper cutter because it, it does a fantastic job. I don't know how many of you might have this tool, uh, but you put it in reverse, it kicks back open. This thing self adjusts cuts different pipes. I'm not gonna really label this as a tool that I use underneath my sink, but I'm just gonna show it to you. You just slide it on. It 
it cuts through the pipe. You do still have to deburr it. It does have a burr on there. I'm not going to do that for this instance right here because this isn't going in somebody's house. Uh, but with the compression ring, you know, you just slide this on, slide your ring or your ferrule on, whatever you want to call it, and then you put this on and tighten that up. And to do that uh, for under the uh, under the sink plumbing tools, normally I will use a just a little six inch adjustable wrench and then also a Knipex pliers wrench and I'll go between the two and I'll clamp onto one here. And I don't really have as much room underneath here as what I might would have under a sink. And then I'll open this up and just do one or the other. And sometimes it's vice versa. And then I'll just tighten that ring down until I get that tight. And I, again, I just prefer these compression rings. I am interested if any of you have the quick tight uh, angle stop wrench where basically you take a thing and you thread it on here. It's like a little pipe. And then there's an adjusting wrench that you put on back on this side. Because I do enough of these that I think that might be worthwhile for me to purchase. I've seen a lot of short videos of different people using those. Uh, but I'm interested if any of you have it, how well it's worked out for you. Because the reviews are mixed on it. But I've thought about getting it a time or two. So you guys let me know in the comments below. Uh, so once you get that tight, you know that's not going to come off there. I've never had much problem with these leaking like that. So again, that is what I typically use. So a good set of tools for you to have for under the sink. And some people like 10 inch pliers and things like that. I just have a hard time fitting those underneath the sink. You know, this is a little six inch Milwaukee. I have no problem getting that on shut off valves and stuff like that. And for the most part, you're not needing crazy amount of torque. Uh, now I typically will put some pipe dope on my threads when I use a compression nut like this. Uh, even though you don't have to do it, it's not really gonna help for the leaking purposes. I feel like it does allow you to thread that back on there and get it back on there a little easier. And it's the same two tools to take off one of these compression nuts or compression valves is I take a, you know, the same two tools that I put it on with. I can get that on there and take that off. And of course, now you've got this compression nut or ferrule, depends on what you wanna call it. So maybe I need to change out this stop every now and then you can take a stop and you can just put it on and then use this same uh ferrule and same nut and make that work i don't like to do that because to me the customer has paid for a complete new setup here so i like to go ahead and change that out now there's various ways i've seen people take these off i've seen people with you know different tools i've seen people grab a hold of this with just a pair of cobras and take it off i've seen people cut them off and as long as i've got a lot of extra pipe uh, sometimes I might take my copper cutter and just come in here behind it, cut it off and do that. But ever since I bought this, this is a compression puller, a ferro puller. This one's $35. It's the best one that I've ever used. And it typically had a bar going through, if you can see that in the picture. And I just cut that out because I didn't want it because this actually has that shape for a 5 8 socket on there. And the way this works, you take and you slide this back in behind the actual nut and then you also take this screw that into the pipe and then as you tighten that down it's going to slowly pull that nut and pull that ferrule then you just take a 5 8 socket you see here because i've got that labeled as 5 8 to remind myself that you can take it and put it onto an adapter like this and put it in your impactor drill i've seen people do that with this type of tool I don't personally like doing that. I like to have the feel of it. But then as I put that on and as I press that, it's going to slowly move that nut against that compression ring and pull it off that pipe. And there's really not a lot of effort behind it. I've never had this specific tool bulge out my pipe right there. Uh, this is by far the best one that I've used of a ferro puller. And again, for 35 bucks, if you do this very often, again, you might work in an area where you don't do compression rings that much or compression shutoffs, and this would be a waste of money for you, but this is typically what is found in my area, so I have to take these off all the time. And then you see there, I've got the, got the ring off and the nuts there. Now it's a matter of just taking that off, and now I can change that back out to a new uh, shut off if I want to whatever it might be this works really well if you again if you deal with compression valves very often and you need to get that ring off to me you can't beat this one right here it's the best one I've used and I, the fact that you can 
get rid of the little bar and use a socket. It makes it super nice in under a sink where there's obviously sometimes not a lot of room. So that's one of the tools that I like to use the most. Now when I'm dealing with PEX pipe, and again, I mostly deal in PEX B. I've never seen PEX A or Upanor in my area on any service call or anything like that when I went to. Uh, and for the most part, I've got just a few tools that I use with PEX, and I bought most of it with the, it's this eye crimp by iWIS. You can get a half inch and also a three quarter inch, which are pretty much the two pipe sizes that I deal with. Cause again, I'm not a plumber full time. I just do faucet change outs. I might change out a shut off valve, change out an outside hydrant, you know, things like that. I don't go in and plumb houses or anything like that. So it's mostly just service type tools. And you get these two wrenches along with a cutter like this for 75 bucks. I think that that's a pretty good deal because I bought one of these personally at the last place that I worked at for the company and I paid over $100 just for the half inch size because it was the one that I used the most. And I really prefer these close quarter ones over the type that maybe look like bolt cutters because you can just get these in between stud bays and things like that a lot easier. If something's against the wall, you can actually get in there to it where you can't with the others. Uh, so some of the tools, again, that I use for PEX is pretty much that for the most part. And then I like to use uh, rings and things like that. So I'll just show you those two in action. They do have these rings because as you all know, you know, you have the rings without this. These are called the pro rings that you can get at Home Depot. This ring slides on and off. And then you also have to, you don't just press that against the end and crimp it. It has to be spaced back a little bit in order for it to be where it's supposed to be. They even sell, you know, different, here's a T that actually has little spacers there that as you put that on, those two little tabs here, they make you set that in the right spot and then that keeps you going. So if that's where you need it to be, um, and you don't have this kind of a fitting, which I like to use the brass fittings, I just don't have any of them here. Uh, whenever you work with this, sometimes if you're working with a vertical pipe, this slides up and down on you a lot. So just to give you a little bit of a tip in case you do that, if you can get it kind of where you want it, take you a pair of Cobras, and then just squeeze on it just ever so slightly, not real hard, just enough to move it just a little bit now that now that won't slip on you anymore and it will stay in place that helps a whole lot whenever you're dealing with vertical pipe and then you just take your close quarter crimper like this put it on that ring crimp it down and now you're good to go you just pull this back so again it's just a, a lever that you pull back that lets you get in close contact i think for the price that you get half inch and three quarter and a cutter for 75 bucks. And again, I'm not someone who does it all the time, so it's not worth it to me to go spend some crazy amount of money on a PEX crimping tool. Uh, even though I'd like to have one, those two, those two tools right there work out great if you're working in PEX, and now that's good to go. And again, the difference with this one is that, that little red mark right there, I just scoot down some, actually sets the amount off that you need to be that red is actually this amount right here so if you buy these at home depot you don't even have to worry about that whole setting it in the right spot and then you can put that t in there crimp that down and then you're going to be good to go with that as well so again you just pull back slide it over crimp it down check it with your no go go gauge you should be good to go so not a lot of tools that you have to have in pex i remember whenever pex first came to my area all these tools were crazy expensive. There's no way I would have got those for 75 bucks. And, you know, I just think that that's a really good deal. So that's pretty much the tools I use when I work with PEX. Then whenever you get into the kitchen faucets and things like that, again, I'll go with the pliers wrench a lot of times. If I've got room to get up in there and get onto that supply line, sometimes it's just as easy for me to do that. I've already got these in my video bag because, again, some of these tools I keep in my clear bag. They're the ones I don't use real often. Some of them like these I keep in my video bag because I use these for way more than plumbing. And then some I keep in a plumbing organizer. And I've always got these on me. So if, I, if I'm in somewhere and I need to do it, I can usually get up in there with this, but if I have my plumbing tools out because I know that I'm getting into it, again, this rigid, easy faucet, I really like this. They've got a newer version now that's more square on the top, and I think that they don't sell this one anymore, so I don't have that one. Comment down below if you've got that one, if it works still the same, if you've had the older style. But you can see the supply line sizes. It's got hex built in up there for all different sizes. Fits in there perfectly, and then the thing I like about it is it's got this channel that I can sit there and spin 
that supply line nut off while that pipe stays so I can either tighten or loosen a supply line as long as I've got enough room for that to fit between here and some kind of whether it's the you know the trap or uh, so, uh, the angle stop or whatever it might be if you've got enough room for that to fit let me get a tape measure real fast which is roughly around you know 11 inches this works extremely well for supply lines i use it all the time it's pretty much my go-to i recently did buy this basin wrench from uh, pipe vice i've only used it once kind of as a trial and i only bought i bought this so that if this will not fit in that area and i can't get my Knipex pliers wrench up in there. This might be my option and I can add extensions and things like that on it. Uh, I've got a video where I have that. I'll put a link in the description for that. But again, this is pretty much my go-to and then it also has this end. This will fit in several strainer baskets, especially like kitchen sink strainer baskets. I actually just went in my house to see if this would fit. I was gonna film a little video, but I've got a weird strainer basket in my kitchen and this one won't work on that. But it does work a lot of times on several. So again, it's just a, I know it does a lot of things that I don't use it for. It has it's, good grip. It works well. You can get good torque on it. And then your supply line does not get tangled up while it's down inside this channel. So again, for a supply line wrench up in a faucet area, that's pretty much the only place that I use this. It works really well. So yeah, guys, that is the tools that I use in and around the sink or under the sink for the most part. But let me know in the comments below what you think about these, if you have any of these specific ones, how well they work for you, and even more so if you've got another brand that you feel works great, list that down there in the comments below so that people can read that and check out yours versus mine. Maybe yours is the better fit for them. And again, this isn't going to always cover everything because you're going to run into some materials maybe that I don't run into that often or you're going to get under that sink and then somebody's done something totally crazy that you're going to need some different tools that I don't have here. But for the most part, these are the ones that I typically use most often, almost all the time. I keep these either in my truck my organizer or my veto bag and they help me get the job done but i hope it was useful in some way you guys let me know in the comments below always appreciate it you guys stay safe have a blessed day and i'll see you on the next video